Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our monthly live session of peripheral interventions from Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. Today, August 17th, I'm Vishal Kapoor, welcome you for another uh, exciting case. Uh, before we head on to the cat lab, I just wanted to let you know that if you have any questions or any comments during this case, you can email us at info at peripheralinterventions.org. The link of this video from this live telecast today would be on the website by the end of the week. And of course, you can go on to the archive section to view any of the prior cases by clicking onto archives and scrolling down. Our next broadcast will be September 28th at 8 a.m. Uh, today, just to mix up the, uh, the case and actually based on uh, popular demand, we are actually presenting a good AAA aneurysm case with uh, uh, PK and one of our surgical partners, uh, Dr. Rajiv Chander. So I'll, without any further delay, I'll take you over to the cath lab and morning PK. Good morning, Michelle. Uh, again, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I, want to, I want to apologize to the audience. I know we started off about 40, 35 minutes late today, but uh, as you can imagine, sometimes a little bit more prep that goes into some of these cases. And uh, so we, we have a wonderful case here. I want to thank our, our surgical colleague, who's the director of uh, vascular surgery at uh, the VA here in the Bronx, and one of our, our assistant professors here at Mount Sinai, Dr. Rajiv Chandar, who's here uh, to help us, uh, to educate all of us, and also really to, to talk a little bit about this very complex disease process uh, of, of aortic disease that, uh, that really every endovascular interventionist out there, uh, you know, who's doing cases is going to run into. So at Mount Sinai, uh, just uh, a little bit about our program before we start, uh, the aneurysms are predominantly done by our surgical colleagues. Uh, however, our colleague, Dr. Dangus, who's on vacation right now, is, uh, is, uh, is definitely uh, somebody who participates uh, in these aneurysm repair cases with downstairs. As we grow, as we continue to evolve here in the cath lab, uh, you know, uh, we will probably work with Dr. Chandler closer in the future to do more of these cases, but and also to help, uh, you know, educate our fellows and us. But anyway, well, just to introduce everyone, to my left is Dr. Chandler. Thank you, Raj, for coming. Um, uh, Dr. Assad is our interventional fellow. Dr. Farhan Majid is our endovascular fellow. Ray Lascano behind us. Uh, Elizabeth, our nurse, and Damien, our tech, are here to, to start us off. So without further ado, I'm going to have Farhan uh, present the case, and we'll, we'll get started. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, so uh, this is a 56-year-old uh, um, male uh, with a history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and coronary artery disease. Uh, the patient is known to have a uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm in the past. Uh, previously, he had an ultrasound that showed that an aneurysm uh, measured 4.7 centimeters in diameter. Uh, he uh, has Hold been followed on. by his primary uh, care physician, and a subsequent CTA of the uh, surveillance CTA has shown that his aneurysm has increased from uh, 4.7 to 5.5 centimeters in diameter and uh, is 5.6 uh, centimeters in length with a mural thrombus uh, of 1.5 centimeters in thickness. He continues to remain asymptomatic. Next slide, please. His uh, past medical history, as you can see, in, uh, includes uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm. He's got hypertension, yeah. hyperlipidemia, mm -hmm. coronary artery disease. He has had two drug eluting stents, one in the LAD and one in the right coronary artery. Uh, his ejection fraction is 65%. Uh, his medications include aspirin, Plavix, You're he's right on a beta that. blocker, a statin, below. ACE inhibitor, and IMDOR. Right there. Um, he is a long-time smoker. He quit, quit about in 2015, out, and mm. his exam is fairly unremarkable. His blood pressure and heart rate are well controlled. Uh, his uh, labs are all within normal limits. Uh, this is a uh, CTA of his uh, abdomen pelvis. His, um, as you can see, this is a reconstruction. Uh, the, um, you can see the aneur infrarenal the aneurysm. Wire. He has a fusiform uh, infrarenal aneurysm um, that measures 5.5 centimeters in diameter, 5.6 centimeters in length, and has a mural thrombus uh, of 1.5 centimeters in thickness. Yeah. His uh, celiac and superior mesenteric arteries are patent. His inferior mesenteric was not able to be visualized. His uh, common iliac, external iliac, and internal iliac are all patent without any aneurysm or dissection or any other issues. So, um, to PK. So, without further ado, I just gonna we're just gonna get things <coughs> in place here, and I just want to stop here for a second and really start our discussion. 
So, so two things uh, I think it's important here is we're going to ask Ch Dr. Chandler uh, really about, about what is the workup necessary for these patients and what is the decision-making process that goes into it. So currently our audience is predominantly interventional cardiologists. We have some vascular surgeons who do register, but generally speaking, it's an interventional cardiology audience. Mm -hmm. And so in, the, in this situation here, when you have an asymptomatic AAA that has rapidly grown in size from 4.7 to 5.5 within, I think, what, a year or so? Mm -hmm. um, obviously it indicates, everybody knows from our knowledge of aneurysms that this should be fixed. So, so tell us about, a little bit about the pre-op workup the preparation, uh, what is the planning that goes into fixing these aneurysms, and how do you decide between open and closed? So the pre-op workup, it's usually, st it starts with an ultrasound which defines that whether or not the patient has the aneurysm. Subsequent to that, we need a CTA. I prefer CTAs with one millimeter cuts. They give us a lot more information, and they give us the anatomy that is needed for us to do the repair. Most of the time, endovascular repair is largely re preferred, but there are some small minor cases where we ha may have to go ahead and do them open, where the iliacs are, are not of a proper size, where we can put the so graft yeah, up, she or the, the and or if there is no uh, space between the renal arteries yeah, and the rest of the aorta for us to have a graft. Most grafts will need at least 10 millimeters of space between the lowest renal artery and the aneurysm dilatation. Yes, let's mark that. Let's mark it. Um, for to get good fixation. So after the CTA, we mark where the renal yeah, arteries are. Forceps. We figure out how big of a graft we need for, by sizing it. And subsequent to that, after we have figured out our access also, we decide our whether or not we can do this endovascular or open. Indications for open is when there is a greater than 90 degree angulation at the neck, when the aneurysmal degeneration starts, where there's no space with the renals and the aneurysm dilatation starts, or if there's no iliac where we can get access through safely. Just put the endograft up. Good. So, 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 so when you look at the CAT scan, can you go back to the CAT scan, guys? It's 5,000 now. Uh, show us the presentation and go back to the CAT scan. Raj, for the audience, yep. when you look at the CAT scan, when you look at the reconstruction of the CAT scan, you've made some markers, right? Yeah. So, so, so what are the things that you're looking at and what are the things that the cardiologists have to, have to try to recognize whether, whether this is a patient, obviously you talked about why they're endovascular, but what, what are the important landmarks and measurements they need to understand? So right off the bat, we have to start by looking at the renals. He's got... His left renal is higher than the right. His right also has an accessory, which causes a little bit of a problem because if the accessory is greater than three millimeters, it's really recommended not to cover it. His uh, accessory, which is marked as P2 over there, is essentially 2.3 millimeters, which is and it's not even feeding a whole uh, pole. So we decided we're going to cover it. Next, we have to look at how much space we have between the renals and the aneurysmal degeneration. Over here, we have a generous amount of neck. We have close to 30 millimeters. Normally, you need 10 if you're going to go with a unigraft, 15 with the endologics graft, which is preferred in my practice, again, because subsequent to that, we, we, we preserve our aortic bifurcation and we can do our peripheral works through the groin in the future. And then it also gives us active fixation. We can talk about this a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Active and anatomical fixation. It has also, also been known to cause, uh, the results are also very good for type 2 endo leaks. It essentially has none. So the third thing, we look at the size of the aneurysm itself. It's about five centimeters. We got to see how far the dilatation goes down to. It, in this case, the P4 essentially shows us where it ends. It ends right at the bifurcation, which is a good thing for us. That means we do not, he does not have aneurysmal disease extending down to his iliacs, and we're not going to have to cover more of the iliacs than needed. And of course, the access. How large are the iliacs? Normally, with the endologic device, which is low profile, need about 6.3 to 6.5. He has close to 8 for 
access. Those are the things that we look at, Prakash. So, so that's excellent. So when, you, when you're saying the decision now between, uh, so now the decision has been made, he's anatomically suitable for an, for an endovascular repair. Mm -hmm. How do you decide the graft of choice? Is there any head-to-head -head trials? I know that there are suprarenal grafts, infrarenal grafts, yeah. fixation, so on and so forth. So in this case, yeah. this is kind of the simplest type of aneurysm that you could probably get, right? Absolutely. And the reason we're presenting this is we'd like to get graded complexity of aneurysm, uh, you know, to, so we can build the lessons on our, uh, to our audience. So in this type of case, which is a, what we call as a simple graft, if there is such a thing, uh -huh. why did you choose the endologics and what are the other grafts that you can use? And if you can compare and contrast some of the grafts, mm -hmm. it would be helpful to our audience. So the endologic graft is fantastic for this patient. He has peripheral vascular disease on top of his aortic aneurysm. If we were to go with different grafts, we would lose his bifurcation. Most grafts, such as Gore and Cook, rely on active fi fixation. So describe active and passive. Uh, uh, and, uh, active fixation essentially is when the hooks of the graft will hang on to the non-aneurysmal part of the artery right underneath the renals, as you can see at the P2 section. They actually hook on and hang on to it. That's the only way that gra you're going to get a seal. In the endologics graft, it's a two-piece graft. We're going to put the graft up into the aorta, and we're going to seat it on top of the iliac arteries meaning that we're going to have anatomical fixation there. Subsequent to that, we're also going to extend up and place another graft, an extension piece, which is going to give us active fixation. So that's why we decided to go with the endologics graft on this patient. The well, other grafts we could have used are the active fixation grafts, again, which are the majority of the rest of the population is using Gore and Cook. But again, by using that, those graphs, you will lose your whole bifurcation of the iliacs. Um, in this patient, it's not, uh, it's not even a thought process, but if one of the iliacs were completely blocked, we could go with the aorta uni, which is essentially a tube graft that comes down right below the renals and goes all the way down to the iliacs, just one iliac, and then they need a fem-fem bypass subsequent to that. That used to be the standard of care when, the when we started repairing aneurysms in the 80s, but now we try to preserve most, both iliacs. Okay, so, so that's great. So in terms of access, so we talked about the, pre the pre-op preparation, we talked about the decision making and the choices of graphs that we have available. Is there any head-to-head -head data among the different graphs that are available saying that there's less endoleaks in one graft versus better outcomes with the other graft? I have no idea. I'm just saying uh -huh. I want the audience to see if there's any head-to-head -head other than these characteristics that you talked about, which are favorable mm -hmm. for future interventions and so on and so forth. But if you look at Cook versus Gore versus endologics versus whatever else, uh, trivascular, whatever may be available, what, what, what is, the, uh, is, is there any head-to-head -head data? Great question. I'm actually part of the trial. It's called the Leopard Trial, where we actually look at head-to-head -head endologics along with the rest of the graphs. There have been, in the past, retrospective studies where they have retrospectively looked at the data and they found that you know, there's migration rates with different kind of graphs. It's mm -hmm. not much. Just a little bit of it's bleeding. Not much. Yeah. It's just a wire. Um, it, migration rates, depending on what kind of graft it's used. But the grafts have evolved over time. The endologics itself right now is on its third generation. Gore right now is on its fourth generation. So none of that data actually applies to us anymore. We so are waiting for the data to come out in the leopard trial. However, it has been shown with the endologics device, the type two endoleaks is quite low. However, the migration rate is questioned with, with the Gore device because it doesn't have super renal fixation. It relies essentially on the hooks and, and it's been known to have a little bit more of uh, the migration rate. Again, the data is not out yet. So, so the things that we have to worry about are migration rates, we have to worry about endoleaks, endo endoleaks and what else? And essentially over time, graft separation. If you have multiple grafts, into a patient, you can get graft separation. And it usually does occur more often with the active fixation devices, again, because imagine if you put up a device right under the renals, you, you have to cannulate the contragate and place multiple more limbs coming down. And sometimes they tend to uh, separate, especially in the aneurysmal portion. Right. Um, 
-hmm. Sorry. No, no, one no. one other thing that's really important to look at also is we also have to worry about whether or not you get you, you can get occlusion of one of the limbs, either the Plus ipsy the or the contra, and that can also be a that that can also be a result over time. And again, the data is not out at this time, but we are looking forward to it in the next year. Okay. Year and a half. So at this stage right now, other than anatomic considerations, mm -hmm. pretty much, uh, you know, is there any differences in sheet sizes uh, uh -huh. versus one versus the other uh, in, in your decision making? Depending on, the, again, it also depends on the size of the graph that you're using. And it also depends on the company that you're using at the time. Trivascular at this time has the shortest, smallest sheet mm -hmm. of diameter in market. Um, it's 14 French. Mm -hmm. um, here today we're using a 18 French endologics and usually with Gore it's 19 to 18 French or again with Coke 1918. So so pretty much so, so there's really no difference in sheet sizes no. of value. Number mm -hmm. two, most of them can be done uh, uh, percutaneously which we'll discuss in a second. Yes. So three, the decision making is really based on the anatomical availability of, 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 the, of, the, of the aneurysm and of the patient. Of the so, patient, most okay. importantly, especially if they're peripheral vascopaths we want to keep that bifurcation intact. Okay, so, so that now the question is what, what have we done so far uh, in, this, in this particular case in terms of access, in terms of closing, mm -hmm. in terms of what you've gotten, gotten prepared? Fantastic. So looking at this aneurysm, we felt that the right side is less tortuous than the left, so we're going to use the main body, which is going to be called the ipsy limb, is going to come up through the right side. And we're going to cannulate, we're going to snare the contra limb on from the left side. Uh, we have placed a eight foot, we have used the proglide to do the per close preoperatively, and now we're going to place a 18 French sheath over the per close and a seven French on the contra and deliver the device. We've already taken the angiogram to mark uh, where the aneurysm and the renals are. We're going to do an another aortogram <coughs> after which to a focused or a high mag aortogram up top to mark where the renals are and land our second piece underneath it. So, so at, at this stage, uh, what is the use of the angiogram and what are the catheters and wires that you have put up here? Um, so on the right, on the left of the screen, which is the Ipsy side, again, we have a stiff wire. It's sort of like building a railroad track where you can send up a graft. Normally you want the stiff wire to be placed in the second intercostal place. It has to be marked onto the table where it doesn't move anymore. We wouldn't want that to go into the carotids or the vertebrals if it moves or comes back. We need a good purchase into the thoracic aorta because we're going to be placing a long sheath over it and it helps stabilize it. On the left right now, at this point, we have a snare catheter in place. Note where the snare catheter and our wire are actually meeting and that's where we're essentially are going to a snare. That wire's coming the back. The wire's coming back. back. Let's pull it back. That's not me. Uh, that's the other one. Yep. Let's pull it back. Pull the other ones over there. Yep. There you go. And we don't need it to be that high yeah. regardless. Just a sec. That's in the back right to the there. marker. Back to the marker. Marker's yep. right here. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And that's it. So, so right now we're going to get started in terms of anticoagulation. So right now we're going to get the 18 front sheath in. As I usually put the anticoagulation on when I put the larger sheath in into place. We have given 5,000 a heparin intravenously at this time. And for this graft, I would need somebody on the other side to snare and help me bring the graft down. Because there's also a chance where you can actually have a twist or the, graft, the contra limb could go to the other side. We have to make sure we have to work together as a team. This is a two-man graph. No problem. So the cuff pressure is a little low. Is that something we're expecting here? Is it sedation-wise anything? You haven't given any sedation? We're set. So it's probably maybe yeah. you want to give one of Neo or something just to get the pressure up. Yep. Huh? Oh, fluid's going. And is he? Uh, does he? Have, is he? In, is he in any sort of pain or anything? No. Okay. Give us 18 French sheet, guys. Okay. Do you want to come on the yep. other side mm -hmm. and help me? Yep. All right. Uh, great conversation, uh, PK. And uh, thanks for the update, yeah. Rajiv. I need you to help. Uh, me just thing. a quick oh, question. Eighteen French. How, like you talked about endo leaks being one of the commonest concerns for Do we have the sheet from the a surgical yeah, or intervention aspect post uh, uh, triple A graft? How What's concerned that? are you What's about that, the my lumbar? Friend? I, I couldn't hear you. So. Say it again. All right. No, my only question was that, I mean, it was a great conversation. Just from an interventionist or surgeon's perspective, I mean, everybody's concerned about the endo leaks. 
being the biggest uh, you know, itching uh, stuff, especially after you've deployed the graphs. How concerned are you about these lumbars yeah. and those feeding arteries to the AAA? Is there a cutoff if the size is bigger than something that you coil them? Three millimeter is the cutoff for the accessory renals. Don't pull the wire. Feed but, the 18 French over, please. But how about the feeding vessels for the endoleak? Yeah. It depends. If you do end up what? getting an endoleak postoperatively, that's when it's usually dealt with. There is no, there is no number, a given okay. number. Put the sheath on now, please. Is he okay? Dolores, no dweller? No problema? Dolores, no, no. I want to watch the sheath come up. All right, why is it going low? Give me the sheath. Let's Give put the graft the sheath. up. Let's move. So right, this is an Amplat super stiff wire you're using on the right yeah, side? Yeah, we're yes. going to go with an Amplat super stiff. He's a little hypotensive. We're going to go up with the dry sheath. Let's go. Nothing, just I want to watch up, myself come Maintain up, bring it pressure. down, bring the table down. Okay. It's going to be okay. Relax. No, no. Up, up. Good. Hold the wire tight. All right. Give, give Neil, please. So we're just having a little hypotension here, uh, Vishal. I okay. think it's probably because of probably the... Probably a little uh, bit of sedation, a little bit of... Okay, okay. Uh, right. Atropine. Atropine. What's going on? Okay, senor. Tose? Papa, como Tose? 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 Okay, but heart rate's back. Okay. I think it's a little bit of vague. Yep. Get on the other yep. side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, point here, six. I have, I have a Venus sheet here. So let's transduce. So, Vishal, as you can imagine, he's having a little bit of pain. Right. So we're just gonna go through. Can you give me a Venus sheet, please? Let's let's I get let's get the heart rate back up. I think a little bit of get another nurse, please. Pressure on the groin is probably giving a little yep. bit of vagal yep. uh, addition as can, well. Can we can we get Tatch here? Grab this. All right. Did you get point six? Wait, just wait till the heart rate jumps up. So we're gonna wait. Can I have a venous transducer? So what we're doing here, guys, we're just going to go ahead and get uh, no get, 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 get access. We have a venous access, as, as we talked about. And now we're going to attach uh, a, a, a venous, uh, what is it called, line, so we can have uh, IV fluids going quickly. And why didn't we transduce this earlier? I'm curious. So we're just going to go ahead and do that now. Uh -huh. So it's close Papa, to no the mueva, patient. No mueva. No mueva, senor. Todo bien? Okay. He's fine. He's just okay. The heart rate is now 54. We'd like to take it up a little bit higher. That will get his blood pressure also. Okay. Up, so. But get, what'd you get? 0. 0.6. All right. So we're gonna wait for the heart rate to go a little bit higher here. Blood Don't pressure is 59. So we're gonna go up with the uh, with the uh, neo, please. Okay. Have so the big so balloon open. open. Open the big balloon, guys. It's open to the patient. Just in case. Let me see. Look out. I got okay. Pressure, okay, it's buddy. open to the patient. Go. All right, let's go. Great. Yes. Grab this here. What do you want me to do? Nothing. I so can't move. I pressure. Okay, let me uh, let me flush this here. Oh, buddy, you're in the arterial. Oh, I that's know. why. Sorry. This is the one. All right. All right, Liz, open. Go. Should be fine now. All right, let's go. Let's All get right. a big balloon. So the issues here may be rupture, obviously, of this aneurysm, which we're going to have to deal with. So there. It's going to be okay. fine. I just want it off mag now, please. Okay, we're going to go low mag. So you can see Follow here. Me up. Okay, he's bradding again. Follow probably can we see the extra? We're not able to see okay. the uh, floral images. Okay. 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 Let's get a pacemaker up there. Let's pace her. We should move. Okay. I need you on the other side. Please. Okay. All right. Let's get a pacemaker open just in case. I'm coming on the other side. Graft. So, Vishal, I mean, as you know, we, we need to get the blood pressure a little more solid. So now I'm going to... Huh? Get a pacemaker he's ready. Not, he's not ruptured. Mm -hmm. Blood pressure is coming up to 79. You start a neo drip, please, Flora. So heart rate is around the 40s. Yep. Get a pacemaker up there to protect ourselves, guys. Go live, please. Go live, okay. floor. Okay, so now what we have is the, the, we, have the, we have the catheter all the way up, uh, and now we're walking guys, out the dilator. Keep, keep your eyes on that wire. It yeah, should the wire not is fine. come it's out, not moving. okay? It's yep. not moving. So we're pinning the wire so it doesn't go up into the carotid as we spoke. So now, now maybe we should transduce the pressure on one of the, one of the limbs here. So we have an intraarterial pressure. You're not going to have it because you have sheets in there. Uh huh? You have a... Uh, yep. So give me a... Uh, yep. 
let's uh you can well there's going to be a five and a five though right yeah boss uh, so it's, it's a seven you can put it on a big tail to get a quick intra arterial pressure it's yeah guys get the second piece of the snare ready yep Flush forward, please. Get it over with flush forward on this, Ray. Flush forward. Flush forward. Uh-huh. Okay. Is my wire good? Wires are good. Yep. Take this off. So right now, uh, Vishal, I know we're working here trying to get the patient a little stable. Blood pressure has come up to 96. Great. And there's your arterial pressure around 120. So we're Great. very good right now, so I'm not too worried. Uh, we, we got a heart rate around 70. Keep everything and straight. And as you can imagine, this, is all, this so wire has to be straight. This. Right. Wire has to Start be straight. This. So, so as you can imagine that we, we, have, we have obviously stabilized the patient. So the differential diagnosis in this situation is obviously going to be vagal response versus uh, perforation of the aneurysm, which is a very real issue. So, so, so a couple of the things. We have a pacemaker here, which we're not going to insert. We're going to keep it on the side. And, and we're and, obviously and, ready and, with the balloon. Yeah. And a couple of the things that you want to have is you want to have the ready balloon ready to go. So we have an aortic occlusion balloon that's available. Um, Raj, can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you get hypo, hypotension, which is very acute during the aortic repair, rupture is first on your differential. We always have a balloon open. It's a, usually a 30cc balloon with a 30cc syringe that should also be on the table at all time. Place the balloon up, inflate it anywhere into the aorta where it's not aneurysmal and most of the time you have control and you can still finish your endovascular okay. repair. Now, in uh, fact, mm -hmm. sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. In fact, there's been a, you know, being on call for vascular at all of Mount Sinai sites, there's been a, a slew of ruptures where I have done them under local and sedation and we actually do that the same exact way. We place the balloon up, get control and we stabilize the patient in that sense. Well, now, I want to stop there for a second before you go forward, Raj. Everything yeah. is stable. So right now, we've loaded uh, the actual the body of the graft piece on. So the body of the graft, it has to be rotated with the yellow part facing the other side. Uh -huh. Dr. Chandler is now going to load this, this, this particular, what, what, what is device. this piece called? It's called it, a snare device. This is the contra limb, essentially, yes. that's going to be, you're going to be snaring into right. your snare device. Right. So we're going to place a snare Device. The second piece ca of this catheter into this now, please so, take so this off the table. Mm -hmm. So okay. one of the things you want to do now is to understand what's happening. And now that uh, Elizabeth has done such a great job in, in getting the patient stable, now I'm loading. What snare are we using? This is the, uh, th this is the end snare. Okay. Yep. Here we go. There you go. So uh, the snare is going in, right? Snare's going in. We, I usually... Floor. So as You're the wrong, snare, the snare goes in, attention. you can see here we may drop a little bit of pressure, but that's okay. So what we're planning on doing is just opening the snare at the end of the device mm -hmm. and letting Raj just send the, the end of the wire through this. Then I'm going to grab it. Is the wire up already? No, sir. no it's no, not. That's yeah. a long, that's that's, a, it's a long yeah. sheet. Sorry about that. And that's the really good question. That's a really good point that Prakash just brought up. We have to make sure our stiff wire is well beyond the snare before we place in the other. There that's really good placement. Right. I'm going to go uh, ahead and I'm going to send you the contra limb wire at this time. Right. Few caveats on loading the device on. We have to make sure it's on the medial end. The yellow marker is on the medial side of the patient because that's where the contra limb is. This is going to be coming up to you. And as we snare this, we have to make sure we snare only the darker portion of the device. Now he's going to try to steer it in there if he yeah. can. Because I you don't pull it down a bit. Yeah, I'm going to pull it down now. Uh, let me hold this here. Yep. It's hard for me to turn my head. I'm an old man. No, it's not your fault. <laughs> Let's turn this screen. So doc no, it's okay. Nope, it's not there. I'm going to try to torque the snare now. Yeah, here you go. This is going to be. There you go. Now you got it. You, so you now I'm going to advance and capture you got it. it. Yeah, grab it. You got it, buddy. Rock and roll. Nope. Nope. Missed it. So again, I'm going to pull it up. Mag is okay. It's okay. We'll get it. Uh, leave it right there, Rod. Let gotcha. me advance this now. So you don't want to snare it way down on the body either because the wire gets stiffer. Nope. Missed again. So we'll try again. Yeah, it's just. Uh, where's the, oh, thanks, Liz. Bring this a little closer, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Let helps a little bit too. Uh. Nope, missed again. Right? Uh, bring it in all the way. 
Yep. Yep. So let me advance the snare again. So again, this is kind of the pain in the ass part of what we do, right? Let me torque yeah. the snare here a little bit. Should I come through now? Yep, there it is. Yeah. And now I should go. And honestly, this is a lot more better than cannulating a gate on a big aneurysm. Sometimes people can't cannulate it, then they have to convert to a uni. This is a... I got it. You got it? I think... Nope. Nope. God darn it. Yeah, I know. What is going on? This is the fun part. I don't know. I'd like to get this over with, you know? <laughs> I hear you. Show me a little higher, guys. Push it through, Raj? Yep. The wires. I don't even know if it's... Yep. Let me see Let's here. See. No, I'm not in, Raj. Okay. Let me try now. Yes. Maybe that's it. Uh-huh. Nope. Okay, One let's go time. down a little bit lower into the aorta and try to snare there. We're too high up right now. Let's pull down. Let's go yeah, down. Yeah, would you think it would be more beneficial is more of the bifurcation to try to snare it? Yeah, that's what we did. Yeah, I agree. Last time, that's what we did. Right. Yeah, that's but that's where the aneurysm is too, right? Correct. So you don't want, then, then, you, then you have a lot more space where you're trying to I snare it this. Now. It's uh, much more easier to snare these things. Oh. Than oh. Lord help us, huh? There we go. And if it doesn't work, we'll obviously come down and try a different. It's always easier to bring the sheets down than to push them up. So we always start high and then we go lower. Nope, same mistake. Right, want to come down a bit? Why don't I try to angle would it? it? Would, it, would, it would, would it be wrong to shape this wire a little bit at the end? Do you know? You, or you want it to be straight always? Uh, no, we don't manipulate the. You got it. it I got it's it. It's moving now. this time. No, I think I got yeah. it. Yeah. No, we don't manipulate the oh, okay. wires because it can deploy the device. Ah, okay. And it, that turns into a here. The snare is yeah. caught in the aneurysm, I think. Yeah, that's uh, well, yeah. Let's see. Does that help? I don't know. There uh, it is. Ah. Finally. So the aneurysm okay. helps. So now, now, now the key is... Show I us as we come down. So the key is now, as, 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 Ra uh, as Raj is going to feed it, I'm going to have to pull tension on the snare, mm -hmm. so this way I don't lose the tension. So as Raj, I'm going to pull right now, Raj. Yes, I'm going to start pulling. Yes, sure. I'm gonna, there, I got the snare, right? Yeah, now, now it's I'm in the catheter. Now, as Raj feeds, I'm going to pull, because you do not want the graft to fold on itself, right? Yes, sir. Uh, to keep it up top, guys, not here. Yep. So you want to see any, 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 any tension. I want to maintain the tension on the wire as Raj is feeding. So as, Ra as Raj is feeding, the tension has got to be on the wire here. Okay, you're so good. So now I got it yeah. on this end. We try right. not to grab the yellow part because uh -huh. it can deploy the other limb. So uh -huh. we can just open up the snare now. We got it. Okay. So at this point, we don't want to pull on now the I'm yellow because it'll here. deploy. Yeah. And so you got to watch yourself. I'll feed and you'll take, we just don't want too much tension in the aorta. Now remember, there's an aneurysm there. So Raj, the, the yes, way sir? that sheath is reacting, it's okay, right? Yeah, it's absolutely so fine. So I'm not pulling on, on nope. the sheath. If nope. Raj is feeding, I'm just keeping that wire tense, okay? And as you can see, the limb is going to come. The contralateral limb is going to come now. Raj, can you talk about those markers to see how the orientation is, whether it's in well, the... Well, the orientation is on the table. Okay. As you can see, this yellow... Cuffs okay, Can Liz? anybody see this? Cuffs okay? Okay. Uh, this is all on the medial side. So okay. yellow, watch Let's your head. Here. We'll can, this is on the medial side of the patient. Let's keep, keep going. going here. Okay. I just want to get this over. Hold the wire. Please. Tight. Let's okay, guys. Yep. Don't let the wire come back. Oh, oh. It's okay. Kay. This is just a little bit of uh, work. Okay, Akash. Yep, I'm this okay. This is yep. two man team. I uh, can't see the screen, guys. Can somebody help me with that? What do you need? Uh, that screen. I'm going to bend. You're fine, you're fine. Just turn it, just take it up that way a little bit, guys. So that way we can both be comfortable. Don't pull too hard right now. I'm not pulling. I'm not going to pull. Yep. A little bit of tension going up. Yep, let me have something dry. Let's keep this straight. Thank you. Almost there. And the other thing is you've got to have your forearm on the sheath also. It doesn't bend. Floral. All right. Okay. <laughs> so you saw the tension that Raj had to push with. Yeah. In order Let's to get pull this, this back a little bit. Just save the wire. Just pull it back a little bit. Uh -huh. Little bit, just a little bit. Yep. Okay. Floor. Very good. Is everything mm -hmm. good? Yep. Everything is fine. I'm easing up on attention a little bit. Yep. You're fine. Okay. Let's go back up again. Yep. Now it's smooth. Yep. That seemed to lock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Nope. Okay, let's get the other device open, please. What's happening? It's this device is not going beyond the sheet right now. So what do you have to do? Just put the other do device I let for this some reason. Uh, in a second. The reason why this is not going up. There it goes. There it goes. Hold okay. On one second. Once it starts, it usually is okay. No. No. She's okay. not going up, so we're not going to chance it. We're just going to pull it off and do we're it. We're going to take it out. We're going to recapture it. Sometimes yep. you can have device malfunction, as yep. you can see. Or I'm not sure. So I'm letting go of this now? Yeah, you're going to have to let Flora? it go. It's going to be fine. Yep. Yeah. So, man, this sheath is just uh, beaten up on the inside. Hold on. Hold on. I got it. The sheath. That's... Sometimes you just kind of have to loosen things up a bit. Let's see what happens now. Here we go. All right, we got to, we got it to work. Yeah. So the Prakash, this is the other move that we right. always have to worry about. You got to get your forearm onto the longer sheath to keep right. everything straight and pressure. So right now, guys, you see the tension on Raj's large 18 French sheath. Yeah. I want to make sure that I'm not putting too much pressure mm -hmm. to yank that sheath Mac? into the low mag, guys. Yep. In, in, into the contralateral limb. So yes. right now, <laughs> the key is I got to maintain the pressure not to yank the sheet. So let's go ahead. Let's and keep now moving. we have to make sure there's no wire wrap. Wire right. wrap meaning we're not going around the stiff wire. And we have to be medialized. Uh, we're going to go up a little bit more, Prakash, so that we can see the whole wire. There's no wrap. Uh, um, I don't see a wrap here. Yep. Amanda, do you see... I'm having a difficult time. I don't want to mag up on it. Uh, I don't see wrap. Yeah. I don't, I don't of course it's perfect. I don't see wrap at all. Yeah, yeah. That looks good. So though. now that, we, so sometimes you can end up getting a wrap or the limb could be on the, the contra limb could be on the other side of the aorta. You do not want to deploy at that point. This is a critical point of the case. Now we take this safety stopper off. We're going to start sending this up and you're going to pull as I send. Yep, yep, I know. So you can see here, I'm pulling here just to help Raj. And I'm just pulling slowly. Okay. See, I'm just pulling slowly. Push it in a bit. Uh -huh. You can see uh -huh. here. Prakash, as it comes through, then you're going to just, and we're going to seat it on the bifurcation together, yep. okay? I'm just going to. Here it comes. Here it One, comes. two, bam. Let's bring it down. Uh -huh. Pull, pull, pull. Nice. We're coming down on the bifurcation together. Nice. So together. now this is a two-man stent. Fantastic. Now, do you feel the tension in your hand? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And you can see the tension on the bifurcation. The bifurcation is intact. Cuffless. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. okay. And now at this time, we're going to go ahead and deploy the main body. That is very elegant. Main part of the limb. Yeah. Huh? This is good. Pull back. Prakash, pull I back. I got negative. I'm fully negative here, Roger. Okay. I can't you pull back pull any further. Okay. You want to you wanna deploy this? Me? No, you go. There it is. Okay. okay. Here it comes. So this is the first step. Let's get me... Let me, let me get one of these uh, stopcocks so it doesn't bleed over here. Get us a stopcock, guys. Yeah. And all you have to do now is just deploy the other limb. Yep. While I give forward tension on my side. Well, let me just... Yep. So here. in this case, because we know that the neck is far away from the body, we really don't do an pre-deployment angiogram, correct? We did do a pre-deployment <laughs> angiogram. Go, man. What's, okay. Go ahead, deploy it, right? I'll just uh, hold it. You just pull this over. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be hard for me. I'll hold this for you. Uh -huh. And you bring the yellow over this wire. Uh-huh. Flora? Laura, you're good. I can't do it because I'm all the way on this end okay. here. No, no, you just do it. Deploy, hold this wire, and just walk the yellow out. Can you just show us how you're deploying the control limb? Right there. Yep. You just walk, pull, pull. He's walking the yellow wire. So you're unsheathing through walking yeah. the yellow strip back. Yep, that's it. It's deployed. Right. But that's he's going to still have a lot of tension. Seven pounds of tension Seven into pounds. his hand. That's Seven what wire. it's defined as. Yep, keep, keep going. going. Just pull it keep out. Keep going. Now. You're doing great. Oh, you're doing great. Fantastic. Exactly. Now we're going to place a pigtail or any kind of a catheter. Get over us a pigtail on this one. All right. Let's uh, let's. Uh, I want to check the pressure. I'm getting some PACs. Is the stiff wire in the heart? And because this the, back a bit. because this is the AFX device, we don't have to lock. Come on, chief. Using a pigtail, correct? The contralateral limb. Exactly. Now we're already the counter is already done. We don't have to cannulate. We don't have to do anything else. Now we just have to deploy up top. And after this, um. so as you know, you know, I want to really make a comment on behalf of Dr. Kapoor and myself 
to our colleague, Dr. Karthik Guja, <laughs> who, is, um, who is ill today. Uh, his wife is doing tepid sponging. She's a wonderful, wonderful it. person. And uh, we would like to reach out to Dr. Guja and let him know we miss him. And, so uh, and, and quick recovery. So now the Contro limb wire, we're going to disconnect it by just pushing up onto the pigtail. It's in the AFX2 system, this is the new now version you guys of saw it, that and, right now there? and it just yes. unhooked, and now we're up. So now we have, we have, co we have complete yeah. Control. Yeah. dislodgement of the Contro limb now. Yeah, and now we can use the pig, the same pig that we sent up, as a sh that we uh -huh. which was a shortcut, to use to mark the renos. Here we go, take this please. You can get rid of that wire, boss. Yep, get rid of the wire. All right, you guys do me a favor, come forward with the saline now. You don't need this anymore. And I know it'll... We're almost there. You got the second piece open? Yep. There we go, you can let it bleed. Okay. So now we're going to get an... I need some help Flush here. again, Hold guys. So now we're going to get a abdominal pressure here for Elizabeth. Step on it. Again, I think it's important Step to have it. good communication, good nursing. And, uh, you know, uh, we have Maravik and Lizia. Maravik came running in. She's our rescue nurse that shows up when we need help. And uh, I, think, I think that this is important. So now you can see that the guy was bradycardic. Uh -huh. We had a pacemaker ready. And now you can see what Raj did was he unhooked the contra limb. Yep. Now we're going to go forward and, and do an aerogram, right? As far as uh, like yes. to uh, mark to the mark renals. renals. But right. we're going to get the graft in place before we do that. Got it. And get everything going. Now, per come down, a p a please. Thank you. At this point, I would recommend, and that's <laughs> the company's recommendations also, you take this sheath, this whole graft out, you put in the regular sheath back into the patient yeah. because it has a lot. He's okay? Yeah, he's fine. Okay. Now we're going to just take this piece out. Make sure that wire doesn't come back or go forward. This is you. So just yeah. save the wire and take it out. Yep. Yeah, he knows how to walk it out. So, awesome. uh, you know, just for the audience, I think if you, have, if you have fellows, you need to have regular beating sessions. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we've, we've trained uh, Farhan. If Fantastic. he pulls the wire back, Vishal and I take care of him later. Correct. So, good job. So Did I have another? <laughs> no, you can talk. Yes, the, uh, uh, one more thing I'll tell yeah. you later. Let's pop this on. Yeah. Let's pop that on. Fantastic. Now we're going to go into the abdominal aorta of it. No, you don't need to do that for big drops. Just move, man. Oh, okay. Because he's... Okay, so the other thing I wanted to ask a little bit is... How long has it been for, uh, since the heparin, guys? Uh-huh. 15. <laughs> we're going to be done. Been usually I read dose at 40. Um, okay. Where so I usually operate, I don't have an ACT machine. <laughs> so so <laughs> I, think I, I, I think over here, as you guys see, like, you know, from the audience point of view, mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, it's actually quite simply done. It does have some technical Step things. Like you saw, uh, Dr. Chanda was struggling with the uh, with the deploying the device, but I don't think that was really a device deploy deploy device malfunction. I think what had happened was you had failed to unlock or, yeah, or untwist exactly. the device. Yeah, the device actually performed phenomenally well in this case. Now and we're and now they're gonna they're gonna uh, 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 deploy the super uh, the super graph body, right? Yep. So it's you do not want to move the limb at all. So we come back a little bit, get a little bit of a running start, as I call it. Hold it here. Here we go. And there it goes. I just twisted my hands as I was going through that interface. Yep. Yes, yep. absolutely. So you find the rib space, and I usually just land it right underneath the rib place. We always put it higher than we need to, so we can always pull back after the sheath is out. So and here we go. And I've Let's got my angiogram piece. ready to inject. Yep. Uh, can I get the, just give me one sec, boss. No problem. Okay, here we go. Let me get the, let me get the second device. The second device, guys. So now the second device, Raj, what size is the second device? It is a 24, uh, 25, 75 at the side. So 25 diameter, 75 in length. So we felt that gave us enough overlap on the bottom. And you don't want that to be too long because you could turn that into, otherwise you could have a So I know left. that you said that the renals were, you had 30 centimeters between yes, the sir. renal and the start of the aneurysm, but you chose a 75 device. Mm -hmm. So the question is, why did you give yourself 45 overlap? Um, right? Because uh -huh. you said it was, uh, you said the length was 75, right? That's the neck. That's just the neck. Right. But so we so want overlap also into the graft. So, 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 we so this is your fixation. This is the fixation right. within the graft so we don't get type 3 so endo endo leak. Yes. So, so can, you, can you also, while Prahan is loading, can you go over the types of endo leaks that, that the cardiologists need to know about? Of course. A type 1 endo leak could be type 1A, you got wire, or it could be type 
1B. 1A is usually on the proximal fixation point, and B is at the distal fixation point. The, uh, I just have to point this out. At this point of the graph deployment, you don't really need fluoro because it's within the sheath. Right. So oh, careful. Mm -hmm. Here we go again. Um, but type 2 endo leaks. I are think you should do fluoro for the yeah. audience, though. Sure, absolutely. Uh -huh. And type 2 endo leaks are usually because of a feeding and an exiting vessel into the stent graft itself, or in the aneurysm itself, sorry, outside of the stent graft, which can cause aortic dilatation over time. Threes are component separation, such as this, where we have a suprarenal stent that could separate from the infrarenal stent, or when you place <coughs> limbs in the other devices. And four is usually essentially because of the porosities, and five, we go through that. So we're ready for the shot whenever yep. you are. Sitting. How much DSA, is the overlap DSA? you recommend for uh, the main body? Centimeters, two centimeters, sir. Two centimeters. Two centimeters. Uh, so should we bring it down a little bit? I would. Yeah. Yeah. You want to give a little bit of dye to see where you are? Uh, whatever you think is good. Yeah. yeah, I think for the audience, for yeah. learning purposes. Yeah. Can you inject, please press OK? So let's say, oh, Cindy now. Let's say, Senora, oh, so, Senor, respira profundo. Bota del aire. Aguanta la respiración. Aguanta, aguanta, Cindy. So Beautiful. there's your, uh, your, your angio. Now, this is really for teaching purposes, like Dr. Chandler said, he doesn't, but that's been a normal. Freeze it, guys, when it comes up nice. So you, you can see here that when, when here you, they, he's placed in the device, he wants to see where his renal's are, and you can see how he actually has that. He's, the measurements are so perfect. It looks like you have 30, because if you uh, Mark, count the marker pigtails, you're perfect. So now the question is, now what, what are the choices and thoughts you're having now? My, my thought process essentially is I do not, um, lack of a better word, nail it right underneath the renals because <coughs> we have so much space to start with. So we're going to start bringing the graph down. The, um, can somebody point onto the screen and show us where the graph material starts? Why don't it's you essentially... Why don't you show my finger, guys? I'm gonna, uh, uh, Liz, give me a forceps. Yeah, okay. Okay. yeah so I idea. just want to show you this right here. Show, show the screen here, focus on me. So you can see here, guys, that the graph material yeah. is right here. Right? Yes. That's the graph material, or is it here, Rod? One second, it's we below. So yes, this, that's this the graph, is the graph material, material. Yeah. Right, right here. Yes, sir. So you're going to start pulling this down, and you're going to land it right about here? Uh, pretty much. Yep, because you don't want to get too close to no, the reals. we don't so need the So for the cardiologists out there, you know, everybody wants to try to nail it, and we'll probably try to nail it here. But I think Rod, Dr. Chandler's point is that you have so much space here to get a seal that you can actually err on, on, the, on the side of caution and actually land it a little bit lower. Is that accurate? Absolutely. Okay, so that's what we're going to do, and he's going to demonstrate that now. Rajiv, just a quick question. What about the, uh, the uh, issue <laughs> of uh, really, or, because we are seeing a three-dimensional structure in two dimension. Uh -huh. So what about getting the parallax off? Because, you know, the real ostium, I mean, in this case, like uh, Dr. Christian said, we have a lot of room, so yeah. there's a lot of uh, margin. But for, for nailing it right onto the ostium or just below it, Mm -hmm. how, how do you work on the parallel You're absolutely issues? right. So right now the graft, first of all, the material in the graft is cons uh, it's constrained. Normally if I had to <coughs> nail it on this graft, I would open up the graft. So there's three, por three parts to opening up the graft. I would open up the graft and I would expand it so that we can see where the parallax exactly is. Fix for parallax, shoot another picture for the renals, and then adjust it so okay. and deploy the so last Raj, piece. So Raj, can you tell us the view that you'd shoot right. for the renals? Exactly. Uh, for the renals, it would, you have to go quadral about 20 degrees, cranial quadral, uh, and usually that works. But again, it's, 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 it's not an exact science. We have to open up the graft a little bit to see where the parallax would lie. All right, so for the sake of time here, we're a little bit over, we're gonna go forward. Sure. And I think the points are well taken. So we're gonna deploy now and you uh, tell me when uh, you wanna die. Let's mark the renals, we forgot okay. to do that. Step okay. up. Let's mark the renals. Yep, yep, we go, go scene minus and freeze it. I can give a uh, die, uh, but as you deploy, so the reason we mark, stop. So the reason, the reason you mark the renals is obviously at this stage, I'm gonna have to pull the pigtail out, right? Am I right here? Yeah, uh, you, you can or you can just leave it. Okay, so it's, let's leave it then. You could do it both ways. So why mark the renals then? Then we can always inject and you know exactly where the renals are. Uh, we just did. No, but so I'm saying yeah. as you're deploying, you're saying you're marking the renals, right? If your yeah. pigtail's up, just inject. Yeah, you can inject again. Okay. Normally, when you're nailing the renals, here again, because we, are, we don't have to and the lack of time, we're going to deploy. Got it. Okay. So the first step, you can, uh, in this graph and in most graphs, you can always pull back as so you're deploying. Focus on his hands, guys. Yep. Pull this back. Come back with the whole graph. 
slowly. So again, I want to compliment Elizabeth and Maravik here. The, the patient is doing really well. We've got mm -hmm. the patient's pain is well controlled. There's no issues, and this is completely percutaneous. The patient is wide awake during this procedure. Mm -hmm. And as you can see that, uh, you know, the, the graft is coming down, now he's going to start deploying it. Now, I, I could puff if I need to here, right, Raj? Absolutely. Yep, so maybe I'm just going to puff a little here. Inject, please, put the inject, press OK. So just for the audience, the origin of the graft is just below that conical, uh, the cone, the distal cone, correct? Right, yes, but, sure. I, but, but you guys can see right there, you see it now? We're below the renal. Right, now go ahead. So the first step, take the first trigger off, and we start pulling it back. I'm a, right now, I can pull back or go forward on the first deployment step. There's three steps to this. There. Second, this is going to start opening up the ring. We turn the yellow knob contraclockwise till it opens up. And I usually pull back on my third step. This is going to start, this is where you would fix your parallax, like we talked about okay. earlier, okay. right? Great. And you're going to feel a little click. We can still adjust. So you still have to pull back a little yeah, bit. Absolutely. Here we go. So you pull back a little bit. So notice, guys, for the cardiologist, I'm giving you dye just so you can see. So why don't we go to an angle view here to look at the can renal ostium. That? Let's Pretty go to much. LAO. Uh, Doesn't really matter, does it? Uh, cranial. Let's go okay, RAO cranial or LAO cranial. I don't really there care. You go. That's perfect. All right, ready? Let's do a DSA shot here just for uh, teaching purposes. Press OK. Senor, respiro profundo. Bota del aire. Aguanta la respiración. Aguanta, aguanta. No trague. Senor. Aguanta, aguanta, aguanta. Now you can see there, you, you seem to be below both renals. I yes. mean, is everybody gives a thumbs up there for me? Looks great. Yeah. Looks good, right? Okay, yeah. Flora? It's, again, we have a lot of space. We don't need more. We're going to deploy here. Yep. Exactly. This is the last step of deployment. Take the trigger off and just pin and pull. So the point of no return has occurred. My, yep. pig, my pig, pigtail is trapped, right? This yes. is like trapping a wire. <laughs> it is. Right. It is, absolutely. So oh, at this point, you. and you're, you're pretty much fixed. Now you can just place a wire, get the pigtail Get us a wire, guys. A get us a super core. And you're done. Oh, we got to do an aortogram. Yeah. Uh, after you get to the pig. So the now pig. the patient is, uh, you know, the blood pressure is fluctuating. We've got large sheets in the, in the vessel, obviously. We've got a lot of stuff going on. So we're going we're gonna to obviously check everything. So we're now going to take out the pigtail over a stiff wire. And then we're going to balloon this graft. And I want to ask Dr. Chandler what size balloons he uses for this graft. Uh, depending Flora. on what the aortic graft, because, because in this graft, the materials on the outside of the... Okay, everything uh, coming out, right? Yep. yep. Okay, slowly, wire everything, right? Uh, slowly. Now you want to, you're below your overlap now. You see where the overlap yep. come back a uh -huh. little bit more. Now you pull the wire back and then send it up into the true lumen. Uh -huh. Send it up. Kay. Can you come down? That's it. If you feel a lot of resistance, then you're in the... A lot of resistance. Okay. Well, can you come down a little bit with the uh, x-ray so we can see the lip? Yes. Yep. You just got to get into the graph lumen now. Nope. Yeah, it'll go. It I may be hitting the sturge on the inside. Yeah, I can't just see. I, I Back up. Yep, okay. it's going up. Now like, it is. Nope. There you go. Same problem. Here we go. I got you. There it goes. No, I don't think it is here. You, why don't you do it? You can have right Absolutely. hand. Just right hand is much easier for yes. you guys. Sure. Let's just see. So, so we're trying to now put it into the true lumen. And uh, you can see the wire is getting underneath the graft still. Now we could always, we could use a glide wire if you want, I guess. Yeah. Get us a stiff angle glide, guys. Because Supercore is obviously not a steerable wire. Get us a stiff angle glide. Uh, there it is. We got it. No, no angle lucky. glide needed. So now we're going to go back up, yep. and, and we're going to leave it up top. Uh -huh. there and you a go. small trick to use at this point is to just Perfect. Twist, twist the pigtail. You see it's how it's moving? Uh -huh. That means you're in within the graft. Right. Here you go. So now we're going re <coughs> to retransduce. Yes, sir. Flush forward, please. I got it. We can capture this device at this point, too. Okay, okay, good. Excellent, okay. Now we're gonna give Liz a pressure, which she's happy with. 
and now we're going to go ahead and now do what we got to do. Let's, yeah. let's take this uh, main body out. Uh, it's 140. Yeah, let's take the main body out. Okay, let's take the main body out. You're going to do it under vision, okay? I'm going to un unclick it for you. Flora? Okay, go ahead. Show us low mag, Lasad. So now you're going to watch the main body come yeah. all the way out. And low the mag, key low to mag. this point is, as you're coming through the super renal stent, you want to make sure you don't get caught on it. Stay right there, because you don't want that cone to get caught on that and pull the rest of the graft down. Fantastic. You're in. Good. Good. And that's where the sheath is, right? Look, right now our sheath is within the graft. <coughs> Flim on the other side. He's fine. You're, you're doing great. Just come out. That's it. You don't have to floor anymore. It's within the sheath. Yep. Yep. All right, get us a balloon. What type of balloon do you guys want? Uh, we can shoot a gram. We yeah, may not need a balloon. And then we can yeah. balloon offline. Flora? Yeah. Pull it back. Yeah, yeah it's going to be a little bit of pressure. It's okay. I got you. Good. 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 Now, if you don't mind, I'm just going to put a glide catheter over here into the lumen so that way we get a true picture. So sometimes get us a glide, glide catheter? Sometimes when there's a stiff <coughs> wire, you can get rid of this, please. When there's a stiff wire within the graft, as we're taking the final picture, it may, it may hide the endo leaks. So we always put a glide catheter in towards the end so we don't lose access, yet we get a true picture. Right. So now, so, so what we're going to do is obviously the glide catheter is going to go up. Again, for the audience, you know, the, 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 the hemodynamically patient is stable. Liz, how much Neo have we given? So, say eight what? Eight, eight mics of Neo have gone in. So, uh, 800, excuse me, 800 mics, which is again, like I said, you've got, you've got a patient who's having an 18 French sheath, you know, inserted in their groin with lidocaine and, and Versed. Yeah. So you can imagine, you know, the, the, you will get vagal and some people are a little more sensitive than others. So, so therefore, you can see that th that may be the reason. Second, we've got, uh, oh, right. as far as uh, our atropine, uh, how much do we give? One, one milligram for his bradycardic episode. And uh, we've got a pacer on the table, which we did not use, which I think is smart, especially when you don't have anesthesia in the room. Sure. I think it's important for us to have all these things ready and going. Yep. So Good I job. think the preparation for this case, Dr. Kapoor, as you see, I, th I think it's important, Good. you know, in terms of having, uh, yeah, you know, the backup. adequate manpower, the equipment, yeah, the, the, the things that, uh, you know, can go wrong, <laughs> kind of have to be predicted. So as you Good. see, uh, Dr. Kapoor, Dr. Majid needs a, 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 a conditioning <laughs> today because he didn't, he didn't wet the wire. So we'll talk about this later. We'll prob but probably bring him back with <laughs> a recourse soon. Exactly. We could take this wire now. So now, the, now yeah. you can see that the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the glide catheter is through the sheath. Some sort of and now I'm going to go ahead and do an aerogram. And then yeah. we're going to talk to Raj about ballooning and when we balloon and when we don't balloon. So, uh, senor, respire no. profundo. Let me see one, one set up. picture. Respire profundo. Uh, respire normal. Let me just pull my Uno vez, senor, respire profundo. So that way it doesn't. Respire work. normal. Let me get a 20 syringe. Okay, respire normal, senor. So as Dr. Chandler is getting ready, um, I'm just going to go ahead now and ask the question. Ask, uh, let's first do a DSA. Right. And then we decide. What, are you ready? Yes, sir. So, so what are you going to uh, do? Because, because we're going to be blocking the hypo You're gonna pull on the out. right side with our sheath. I'm just going to pull back on it to make sure everything runs through right. smoothly. There's ready? no kinks. Okay, guys. Senor, respire profundo. Uh, Bote del aire. Aguanta la respiración. Aguanta, aguanta, no trague. Sini? Aguanta, aguanta. So you can see that we're, we're, we're occlusive on the contralateral limb, even though we're pulling out the, the dye. You can see it. Respira normal, senor. And you can see he vagals when uh, he resp he's got respiratory variation of his blood pressure. So now, Raj, what are you looking for specifically now? Specifically, if the, the aneurysm sac, which we saw earlier on our first picture, it's <coughs> whether or not it's lighting up. Right off the bat, there, the sac is not lighting up anymore. Sometimes, no. if the, the sac starts to light up, it will actually happen either really early in the picture, that it can tell you whether or not it's a type one, a in the leak, or it can happen really late in the picture where it'll tell you it's a type 1 B in the leak. Sometimes if there's a concern about a type 2 in the leak, it usually occurs very late in the game. We do not repair type 2 endo leaks while we're in the operating room. We, we only repair type 1As, Bs, 3s, if there's a component separation, 
or anything that's going to be causing larger leaks. Now, if there was a concern about a 1B, let's say, for example, if you don't have it here because it's not lighting up the sack at all, we can actually shoot through the sheet on both sides and figure out which sheet is not <coughs> occlusive completely. Now, whether or not to balloon, it's completely up to us at this point. Um, I think the flow is coming through equally and briskly on both sides. Uh, the left side is a little bit more stenotic than the right. We can place a balloon there and do a gentle, um, a gen uh, a gentle uh, insufflation at the point, but otherwise we're done. I right. would not balloon up top. There's so, no leaks. So if you, if you were to choose a balloon, mm -hmm. what size balloon would you choose? At, at this point, since we're just in the iliac limbs, I could go with a 10, 40 balloon because we're not going to go after the aorta at this point, and then we're not going to waste the coda balloon. So much if you see the delayed filling of the graft at the level of just above the bifurcation, show my finger, guys. Mm -hmm. so, so you can see here at this stage, I mean, for the cardiologist in the room, uh, you know, what is this right here? Is that, an, that's, is that that's behind the graft, or what is that? So that's a very good question. This graft's material is outside of the, uh, outside of the scaffolding, so it balloons out. Imagine if, do we, uh, do we have a demo here? We can show you a demo in a little bit, but it's ballooning out. It's just the material of the graft that's ballooning out. We have a seal. Okay. Great question. So, so then, then I think what we'll do here is uh, we'll go ahead and balloon this um, right now. Um, and, then, and then I think the final picture, we'll go ahead and take it. So do you want to, so get us a 10 balloon, guys. 10 40 uh, balloon here. Mm -hmm. Give me a, 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 a super core. Case. So we're going to put a 1040 up, and then we're going to put a super core. So, so we're just going on a stiff wire to give us enough ability to track uh, everything up. And then we're just going to do a, a quick balloon, mm -hmm. and then uh, we'll be done in a second. Um, so as far as anything else here, Vishal, um, in terms of the other graphs, Raj, Yes, sir. Um, so obviously, it just to, I know it's going to be just a conversation piece here, Flora. Mm -hmm. So as far as the conversation piece, obviously you deploy one limb, then you go, you 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 intubate the contralateral gregate, and then and then you deploy the second limb, right? Yes. That's pretty much it. So the beauty of this graft is you deploy both limbs together. Yes. And then you just deploy the supra or the super graft limb. Yep. I won't say super renal. And the, the beauty of it also is we can use it for occlusive cases. We right. don't have to use two Right. Terms. So last oh. month, as you guys remember, Dr. Tadros and I, uh, uh, as well as our team, we deployed one for aortic stenosis. We had a calcified aortic stenosis that we took care of in this patient. And this is another example of taking care of aneurysms uh, with, this, with this particular type of graft. Again, we're not endorsing one graft versus the other. I think, I think uh, the, 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 po the point is to highlight uh, you know the uh, you know how to do this uh, in a, in a team wise fashion. Look at look at the parameters that the cardiologists need to look at, and obviously there's a lot of value to working as a team. You know everybody brings a different form of expertise. Everybody does has their has their uh, you know strengths and their weaknesses, and I think it's important to complement one another and keep the patient's interest uh, in the best possible uh, scenario. Give me a wet one, guys. So 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 we'll go ahead now. And we're just going to go up with a 10040 balloon here. Um, and Somebody step on Flora, it. Flora, go ahead, advance, rail that, uh, Asad. Yes, so Dr. Asad, who's our TAVR fellow, is very used to working with long wires and tough sheets. Last year he did his TAVR fellowship. So now he's, uh, this is actually accesses of anything less than 25 French don't scare him. <laughs> so he told me, come on, Dr. Krishnan, 20, 18 French, you're we joking. Mag up, I can't see Where's that. the balloon? The balloon's no, still in the sheet, right? No, all right, come right down now. Come back. down with the balloon. Where is the balloon? It's right there. There. Uh, that's there, it? There. Right, there it is. Yeah. Okay. There, oh. Okay, so what you want to do is... Advance a little you forward now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you don't want to be in the native No, this is iliac. good right here. So this is uh, important. I think there's a good point that Dr. Chandler makes. You know, you don't want to, like, the balloon into the, into the body of the graft. You really want to stay in the iliac limb here. Attach, please. So we're going to go up very, very slowly. And then I think the contralateral limb, at least, I mean, to my cardiology eye, looks well deployed. I wouldn't balloon right. that. But yeah. to this limb definitely does not look like it needs yeah. to open up a little bit. So Dr. Dr. Uh, Majid is going to yep. go up with the balloon a little bit. No, go. Oh, I got you. To. I'll tap you. Look at the screen. Good. Good. Just a little bit. Oh. A little bit. Thank you. Good. You're good. 
That's enough, right? That's open. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's good. enough. That's good. So you're not, yeah, no. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 you're also in the native iliac. You don't want to overexpend in the native. You'll rupture. So you can see here, we just kind of massage <laughs> that a little bit. Walk it out, guys, yeah. and get the pigtail ready again. We massage that a little bit, and, and now we're going to go back up with the pig and do a final picture. So uh, important uh, uh, per further points here for the cardiologist and everybody who was, who was not doing so aneurysms on a regular basis. It's just, it's uh, just pulled back on it. Good, yep. It's so one is, um, in, ter in terms of follow-up, I think your wire's in the, in the heart? No? Okay. So, so in, in, in terms of uh, follow-up, so we will now close the groin with, with pre-closes. Okay. It's okay. You out? Come down. It'll come down. Just pull back on it. You have a syringe? Just a second. What size sheet is this? This is a seven. You come right over. Yeah. It's a 10 and a seven. Yeah. Give me one second. More tricks. Just get us another sheet. We're going to walk it out as a system. Yeah. You, you pull. have a sheet? Walk yeah. it out. Yeah. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Ready? There you go. Four, advance the wire. Okay, that's it. Okay. Let's get a pigtail, guys. <coughs> so I'm just going to load the pigtail. <coughs> So as far as antiplatelet therapy, is there anything that we need to know about? No, Over, not, not for the aortic uh, grafts. Uh, we do not need them on any uh, antithrombotics or on anticoagulation at this point. Uh, the follow-up, essentially, uh, after one month, we get a CTA to rule out any endoleaks. So how do you deal with the patient, wet one please, how do you deal with the patient who has a, who has a, a, um, a creatinine issue with CTAs? At certain institutions, we can get a duplex to rule out endo leaks, uh -huh. uh, or you can get a dry CT. And if the dry CT doesn't show any expansion Plural. or any uh, changes in the migration of the graft, then we don't really need to get another, s uh, get a CTA. A little higher. Yep. Happy? Pull out the, we're, we're yep. okay, there you, you go. Just pull that back now, here you pull go. Pull out the wire. Um, and over time, Beautiful. the sac is going to contract over the graft so it's going to get smaller that's the other way you could follow the patients too so after one month of CTA do you repeat it again down the lane and I do months not I do not Low med. And, it, and I'm very selective about whether or not I'm going to get another CTA also I, if the patient is reliable I can just follow up with dry CTs every six months okay and it says uh, we got to come off low mag, low mag. low mag here guys right. senor <coughs> Finalmente, uh, pictura, <laughs> respira profundo, uh -huh. low mag guys. Low mag. Uh, Bote low del mag. aire. Okay, let's fix the picture so we can Floro. see the Bote right. del aire, a little lower. Mm -hmm. Respira profundo, uno vez. Bote del aire. Aguanta la respiración, aguanta, aguanta, no trague. Sini? Your Spanish is definitely improving, PK. Let me I know. It Inject. There you go. So you can see well, that the good. sheath is occlusive on the contralateral side. The iliac is well expanded. We have no endo leaks that we can see, and we're done. So I'm, I'm going to swing around So while, while we close up. And let me just give some uh, final comments. So I think, I think this particular case, uh, Dr. Kapoor, <laughs> I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, on, very good illustration of, of we did this yeah. graft in about an hour. We started around 8.35. It's around 9.40. Obviously, we were a little delayed in getting started for technical reasons. And I think, I think it shows with good preparation, these things can be done in the cardiac cath lab without anesthesia with a good percutaneous approach. I mean, as you see that Dr. Chanda clearly highlighted what, what are the important components of well, your workup prior to, 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 to setting up this graft or setting up a case in your lab for, for do, doing an endograft. I think first and foremost is obviously uh, the, the CAT scan um, to, to figure out whether the, the graft is suitable for an endovascular approach. Second, as a second is, then, is then to go ahead and look at the other parameters and, and the strength and the weaknesses of each graft. And he's gonna highlight this in his lecture of, of, of following, following this. But in this case, you saw it was very clearly highlighted that, that, that he looked at multiple components. One, he looked at the size of the aneurysm. Two, he looked at the distance of the aneurysm neck uh, from, the, from the renal arteries. And, and, and he looked at, at other parameters such as whether the patient has concomitant peripheral no arterial heparin. disease or not, no uh, and, and no decided on what graft he wanted to choose. So in this case, I'd, again, as I said earlier, there's no, 
support of one graft versus the other, we felt that this graft was best for the patient uh, for the following reasons that he had highlighted. Then you saw that the certain things that, that, that happened during the procedure. You saw hypotension, you saw bradycardia. So obviously you need, you need adequate nursing, you need to be very rapid and, and do the things that are necessary to, to go ahead and, and stabilize the patient. And finally, <coughs> you need two doctors to work together to be able to deploy this particular graft. Overall, I think it was a very simple case. Uh, we did it in one hour, and uh, Dr. Chanda is going to spend about another 20, 25 minutes afterwards uh, setting up a lecture uh, 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 on aortic disease and the endovascular management of, of uh, aortic, abdominal aortic aneurysms. So again, on behalf of the cath lab team, I thank Dr. Rajiv Chandra for his time and for coming up here and, and sharing his expertise with us and helping us taking care of our patients. Obviously, I thank my nurses and, uh, and our, our entire team. So we will see you, Vishal, uh, uh, I guess next month. Thank you again. Uh, thank you very much, PK, and thank you, Dr. Chandler, for joining us. I think it was a great example of how to clinically and uh, bet, uh, how to have a good symbiotic relation between two specialties and for the best uh, treatment and care of the patient. Hope you had a good uh, uh, reviewing of this case. For, pe uh, for people who have missed it, you can go back to our website, peripheralinterventions.org, and can view this case in the archive section. It will be loaded by the end of the week. And as previously stated, you can see our previous cases as well. Uh, please do follow up us with uh, next month's live broadcast on September 28th, and I promise 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time from Mount Sinai here. Uh, just to give you an update, we're pleased to announce our annual top 10 cardiology, uh, top 10 advances in uh, cardiology, which will be on October 7th at Mount Sinai Hospital. Don't forget to register at ccssymposium.org. So I hope you have a great week and rest of the month and we'll see you next month with another interesting case have a great day thank you